Thank you. I will share my screen. Uh, I have uh, some material to that I will use to keep focus on my presentation. That's right. This, and we can this see time, it. yeah, this time I would like to focus on on these topics of levels of creativity, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I wonder if we are aware of the the existence of these levels of creativity. What I'm trying to say is that we usually think of creativity on something that happens in the at the personal level, but we don't reflect a lot about the importance of creativity in teams and organizations. So in order to foster innovation, it is important to understand how creativity at the personal level works, but also at the team level and at an organizational creativity. And later on, my good friend Christoph, uh, he would add another layer to this topic of creativity, because then we can talk about uh, creativity in re uh, at a regional point of uh, view, you know, from a regional perspective, from an urban perspective. And um, so we will review some ideas about the levels of creativity. And then um, I will add just uh, some ideas about how important it is to measure creativity in teams. Is it possible to do it or not? So. Uh, let me start. Um, okay, so creativity happens at three different levels from my point of view. The individual one, so it depends on each one, but then it also happens in teams. It depends also on the capacity of the team to work with harmony. So uh, probably you are a talented person, very creative, but then if you have a problem of working with some others, then you can affect the creativity of the team. So that's why uh, we recognize that uh, we can discuss about creativity at this level, I mean, team level. And in organization, creativity depends also on the capacity of this, uh, of the firm to give opportunities and leverage teams and individuals to work the best way they can, that they feel inspired, that they feel, I mean, like, free to propose, uh, free to do mistakes. Uh, and, and the organization is expecting that, um, that the people are uh, creative. So, and we have a lot of um, examples of companies that uh, foster creativity. They have a political within the firm, within their an organization to, to, to support creativity from employees. So, uh, uh, Another way, sorry, another way to, to, to distinguish uh, uh, the focus of creativity could be like from uh, if we decide to think of creative person, we usually consider intellectual levels of uh, ideation, autonomy, expertise, exploratory behavior, and so on. From a product point of view, not I'm not talking uh, about artifacts. I'm just talking of instruments to, to measure creativity. We can also study creativity from this um, point of view because then we try to understand uh, how can we measure what kind of how can we measure creativity? What kind of instrument exists out there to, to measure? If the focus is on the process, then we try to describe mechanisms, techniques for creative thinking. Nowadays, you can buy a box of uh, of cards. Uh, that you can apply for uh, pushing a creative process. But also you can focus on place. And it means that uh, you have to consider the best circumstances in which creativity flourishes. It includes degrees of autonomy, access to resources and the nature of gatekeepers. So uh, at the individual level, um, it is important to ask ourselves are we creative? Uh, do we understand the creativity of other people? A metaphoric example of creativity, you can see it now in this picture of Tom Hanks, who created a friend, Wilson, uh, to speak with someone because he need uh, to socialize. 
So he, we could say that he was creative because, I mean, with the resources that he had, he solved a need. And in this case, to talk to someone. So uh, first of all, it is important to understand then each one uh, in order to manage the contribution to the team and to the organization, to understand the creativity of other people. So I ask you, I ask to the people that is listening to this video, what can you bring to a team? What are your skills? I mean, how do you contribute to, 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 to the creative work of a team? What are you good at? Okay. So then, uh, from a team perspective, I have this. Uh, this is a recent image of Pfizer, the you know the coronavirus vaccine, and I think that, for example, this is a good example of creative team. Why? Because uh, thanks to the effort of different person, they they work together to find a solution of this problem in a, I mean, in a just, uh, in a just few months. So the work of them together, they bring their own creativity, they collaborate, and that's what it made possible to have a, a solution to this problem. So this is a good example of creative team. Another example would be, for example, uh, Queen. I mean, we all love Queen music. So they were very talented people that by themselves, I mean, all along, they didn't, probably they didn't had success. Uh, Freddie Mercury tried, but at the end, he, he wanted to go back and, and play with his team. So this is a, also how uh, they, uh, uh, this is, sorry, a good example of how uh, by knowing each other, they decided to keep working together, playing together, and they produced magic. So this is another way to probably to understand creativity in teams. From an organizational point of view, uh, uh, we would say that uh, the organization may be creative if, if it facilitates awards and promote creativity on their people and teams. I'm just showing the example of uh, 3M, but we could think, for example, like big companies, uh, let's say Google, let's think about uh, IKEA, uh, let's think about IDEO. So uh, I'm just saying the name of big companies, but probably small companies can do it also. They can foster creativity, award creativity, promote creativity among their people. So. Um, uh, it's not easy to measure creativity as it is uh, easy to measure the, the IQ. And also because it is related with the degree at which the person is able to convert ideas into facts. Uh, experts says that there is no relationship between IQ and creativity, it depends. But psychologists have found that a high IQ alone doesn't guarantee creativity, instead, personality, traits that promote divergent thinking are more, are more important. So it is very important to recognize and listen to creative personalities. Divergent thinking is found among people with personalities which have traits such as non-conformity, curiosity, willingness to take risk and persistence. So as you can see, it's not only about intelligence. So it's a combination of intelligence and creativity to succeed. Uh, I have here some examples, probably very local examples, but uh, I, I would try to explain. The first picture on the top, this is the example of, where, of Mexico when they won the, the soccer team, when they won the, the gold medal for the soccer. So they did it because they played very good as a team. They were very creative as a team. But for example, in the in the bottom of the of the of the slides, we, you can see the, the image of a team that is been trying to be champion for the last 20 years and they have made mistakes. They haven't behaved as a team. And 
that's why it is important also to understand how creativity in teams is also related to routines that they learn. But if they don't have, if they don't trust each other, then they won't succeed. So, I mean, I'm just mentioning as a way to, 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 to put on the table that it is important to analyze how teams behave. And team creativity is really, really important because uh, we can see with this picture that, for example, uh, the production of papers, which is registered, uh, the production of papers that uh, communicate new knowledge, we can see that, for example, by 2007, there were almost 20 million of papers published, not only by a single person, but by teams of scientists who work together to, to promote, to, to, pro, to produce knowledge. So as you can see, this is also a, an evidence of, um, an evidence to highlight how important it is to work together to produce knowledge. And they are very creative people. Well, I, I already mentioned the case of, of 3M uh, that they use this uh, philosophy of design driving creativity. You, you just need to take a look at the website of 3M and you will see that they work with communities of designers, with universities. They have um, these uh, headquarters in very important places like in Milan in the USA and strategic, strategic places uh, where the people feel, uh, I mean, where they take advantage of all local resources. I'm talking about talented people. So that, by the way, it connects with this other concept we are not talking about right now of creative classes proposed about Richard Florida from an economical point of view. But uh, uh, I'm just arriving to the end of my, my, my intervention. It's like, uh, I would like to highlight that if we recognize that these three levels are, are important, the personal one, the team one, and at the organizational level, then it is also too important to have instruments that, for example, if we are in a firm, in a, an organization, it is important to have instruments to manage team creativity. We can learn a lot about team creativity from sports. I'm just putting here an image of a journal of sports science where you can find papers of how 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 to foster creativity with, within collective sports. Uh, you can take a look at, uh, or you can study at, what are the three factors of effective and efficient teams? In this case, attitude, sense of value, but also you can, you need to, to understand what are the attributes of creativity, like for example, having perspective, being somewhat with curiosity, a complexity, uh, developing a complexity way of thinking, to be someone that um, uh, is uh, persistent, uh, that is capable of doing association and so on and so on. But at the end, we need instruments to, to measure creativity. There are different different ways to approach to try to measure creativity. Oh, I need to say, if it is possible, probably an expert in the social science would say that it is not. That, but you have, for example, uh, different approaches that in our case we have combined to to try to measure creativity. You have, for example, the proposal of of call the learning styles from core call that let you know we, um, what are your way to, to learn. We don't learn the same way. Uh, we also have, for example, the Myers and Briggs uh, types. So are you the kind of guy uh, 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 who is really open? Uh, are you the, the one that is uh, really, um, mm, that you pay a lot of attention to details? Are you the one that is capable to motivate the whole team. So what is your profile? And th this is, for example, something that uh, also Belvin, Belvin proposes. So you have then the learning styles mo models of course, you have the Myers and Briggs types from Carl Jung in, and you have also the Belvin roles. But then you have model proposal like this one of the idea but with the 10 phases of innovation. 
So there are different ways to try to, to, to understand or to measure creativity. So in synthesis, uh, there is an interaction between the multiple levels of creativity, the personal, the team, and the organizational. And then there is a huge need, that's what I think, and there is a great opportunity to develop tools to facilitate and measure the team equilibrium for uh, creativity. Uh, I would I would like to, to add an example. Let me stop sharing this window and I will share another one. Uh, for example, let's think uh, that we are in a classroom. When we are in a classroom uh, and we want to work with the students and that they work in teams, we usually create the team by, okay, the first five of the list are team one, then the from six to 10, team two. From uh, the, I mean, we do teams three, from three person, four person, five person, or we just say, okay, just do it by yourself, the team. And then we create team because of affinity, because we are good friends. But I think that not necessarily it is the best way to, to, to create a team. I mean, if we are in an organization, for example, Probably this is not a good way. I don't know if you are already seeing my screen. Yes, we can see that. Yeah. Uh, this is the example of uh, a real tool that exists online, developed by a company. Uh, I'm happy to say that I contribute somehow to the development of this tool. There is a paper about it, and the paper is the basis of this, of this team. Uh, I'm showing you, for example, uh, you can find it on the web. It's called Team Equilibrium. That, for example, uh, uh, you go there, you do a test by yourself, and it gives you, for example, using the principles of Edward Bono, the six ads, it, it gives you a, a, a radiography of your creative profile. No? And that, for example, in my case, uh, the green, the green color, it's uh, more prominent. And, for example, it says that I'm someone that, uh, likes to propose ideas and to develop creative solutions to a problem. This is a way to look at it. Another way to look at this is this, the radar. So as you can see, these are the six attributes of the six hats of Edward de Bono, the green, the white, the yellow, and with its explanation. That, But for example, uh, uh, the green one is the attribute that I have more, uh, more control, if I could say so say that, but for example, my levels of black is not good enough, uh, the blue is not good enough, because it's impossible that we have the 100% in all of these cases. I don't know someone who has this, <laughs> this result, but the most important thing that I want to say is that just take a look at this tool, that for example, I mean this, Team, I have the list of teams where I have been participated. And for example, uh, this is one of them, Seattle Creative. I don't know if it is clear the image, but for example, in, uh, you have different le uh, levels of grade, but for example, this one, the, the, the darkest one, this is the addition of the different pro profiles of the people participating in this team. So, it gives you like a radiography of where the people is. This is the, the, the big picture of the team and how I am behaving. Let's show you, let me show you another team. This is another one. As you can see, this is a different way. The, this team has a different uh, behavior as you can see. Or this one has an, a different one or this one has a different one. Fantastic. Are you still with us, Marco? Hello, Marco, are you, can you hear us? I sensed a little bit of uh, kind of a network cut. Uh, Hello. Yes. Conrad, we, can you hear me? Now we can yeah. hear, yes. Okay, I'm just arriving to the end. So what I'm trying to say Sorry. is that 
as you can see, it's like a tool. Um, we could say that it's for fun because, but it makes you uh, to it makes you to 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 take a pause to reflect on. Okay, we are doing a team. What are the profile of each member of the team? And we need to balance the creativity in this team. We need someone who knows how to take decision, but we and we need someone who pay attention to detail, and we need someone who probably it's very uh, who has the ability to to develop ideas, and we need someone to find resources to produce the idea. So this is something important to reflect about it, and that's why creativity need to be discussed at the team level for schools for firms, for uh, any kind of organization that wants to foster creativity through teams. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Marco, for your presentation and highlights. I think uh, very eye-opening and uh, also informative in a sense that uh, one could always uh, resonate with when uh, they are uh, working in an organization or a team or if they have an idea to present in a team.